poems are like tuning forks. They sort of strike people and then there's that, that vibration in, in their imaginations or in their emotional lives and that, that resonance that you, know, you see when you throw the proverbial stone into the water and it, it, the rings go out. And, and, and I, guess I, I, I guess that's what I would love a poem to do, to think that it caused a little bit of a vibration or disturbance or energy that went through people and had some effect. I think maybe that's the, the best I can do as a, as a poem. I just value poetry because I think it's a space for imagination. And I think that that's a very human, fundamental need and part of who we are as a species. Poetry not only speaks to the most urgent human crises, but these you know, throughout the history of language and poetry for thousands of years, you will find these very same crises addressed over and over again. I believe our need to communicate is one of the most basic human instincts, and that poetry communicates so well, so beautifully. How could it not? As long as we're alive, we need language, we need to tell stories, and I think poetry is just, it's another genre for us to kind of uh, tell our stories and communicate, and uh, poetry just does it in a way that's much more, you know, concentrated and really focused on the, um, you know, the, I guess, the meat and potatoes of the language. We communicate by means of stories. We don't, that's how we tell each other what our day was or what we had for breakfast or our problems. We tell a story in order to express our lives. But we don't always get it right when it comes out in words. Writing allows us to spend time on this question or this problem um, and return to it and step forward in that discussion with yourself. Forever and ever someone will want to, out of an emotional place, say something and put it on the page. There's never been a thriving culture, I think, that didn't have poetry. However we define it, right? It is the deepest connection that people make with language and with their hearts and with their minds. It's utterly unlike the way you normally talk, the way anybody normally talks, but it's much truer and much more honest and much more intense and much more beautiful. It does something more than television or film. It's more than just going to the movies. Um, it's something that really allows you to feel like you're experiencing another person's existence and that's a very exciting thing. Poetry is always equal parts mystery and mechanics and that's kind of the mystery side of it you know is you, you can work with the, the syllables the meter the sounds that's the mechanics of it there's still something ineffable about where poetry comes from. It, it's hard People teach literature like the same way they teach math, you know, and the thing is that I think mathematicians would tell you that the way math is taught in schools probably ruins, you know, true higher math, but the thing is you can teach math in school in a way that you can g gain the utility of it for the average person, but I think the way that they teach poetry pr prevents the average person from gaining the utility of poetry, which is to be uh, able to talk subtly about um, meaning and signification and just communication in general, um, you know, poetry is a tool for that, and it's really mistaught. It's taught as though it's a testable problem to solve. I think poetry in some ways is always going to be dangerous. It's always going to be other. It's always going to be inscrutable to a certain segment of the population. And I think that's actually, as much as all those things sound, sound negative, I think that's part of its history. That's part of where it's always been. There's always going to be a, um, someone who thinks, that's pretentious. What, what what is that about about anything that looks like poetry? Mm -hmm. And I think that's 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 fun too, and that's part of I think why it's going to last. For those that that need it, it's it's essential. And I think you know something like uh, Boa demonstrates that there are you know plenty of people across the country or around the world that need what it offers.
There was a small group of people in the 70s, and they all knew each other. Um, Alan Kornblum, um, Tree Swenson, uh, Sam Hamill, Al Poulin, and these people, they, they, they kind of created this small press revolution that had tr completely transformed American publishing and, and has bears fruit. Like when you go to the AWP book fair and you see all of these small independent presses, like this spirit of independent publishing in America it always existed, but those people were the people who first said, we're going to build them as institutions and we're going to have longevity. And all of those presses are still around, you know, going strong. And BOA in particular, out of all of those um, presses, has had such a commitment to a broad aesthetic, a uh, very broad aesthetic. I mean, it, it's hard to say, like, what is a BOA author if you look at the different writers that BOA has published? I think that the first book that I encountered that was published by Boa was the first book that they published, which was The Fuhrer Bunker by W.D. Snodgrass. And I could be wrong, but I seem to think that Al Poland started Boa Editions so that that book could be published because it was a very controversial book. And even though he was a very famous poet in the late 50s and early 60s, nobody would touch that book because the book is from the point of view uh, the poems are from the points of view of Hitler and his inner circle. And so it was obviously a very upsetting poem that this poet was trying to get inside their heads and, and sort of make them human in a way. And that's obviously um, going to upset a lot of people. He wanted to discover new talent, people, you know, people like Lee Young Lee and, and Kim Adonizio and Dorian Lux, I mean, people who have made an impact in contemporary poetry and have influenced other poets. But I think he also wanted to give other poets who were established um, and were having a hard time finding a publisher, give those folks a home. And so he, you know, brings on Carolyn Kaiser, whose book wins a Pulitzer Prize, or he brings on Lucille Clifton, who uh, wins the National Book Award. And all of a sudden, here we are, 40 years on with this press. How many presses have come and gone during those four decades? But Al, Al's vision um, for the sense of what this press could do and be has, has now outlasted him. For, for 20 years. And so it's just an impressive feat and a, a very generous contribution that he's made. When I was with BOA, it was run by Al Poulin who started it. And I think that the people there are keeping up his vision. You know, he was uh, really, really just dedicated to writing and dedicated to finding people and publishing them and get their vo getting their voices out into the world. So, and I think that's what BOA is still doing. And I think it's, I guess one word that comes to mind for me about Boa is brave, <laughs> because it takes a lot of balls to be uh, publishing poetry and, and really continuing and surviving as long as Boa has. So I'm just really grateful that they're part of the scene, making it happen. Like, you know, for some people I, I think to myself, oh yeah, this would be a great book for Press X. You don't say that about Boa. Boa is always surprising in that way. You know it's going to be, you know, I mean, it's, it's weird saying this was with Boa Poets. You know it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but past that, you, you know it's going to be, it's, it's going to be not exactly what you expect. I'm really happy to be uh, with Boa and I'm happy to found a home with Boa and to feel like I'm invited and welcome in this particular publisher has welcomed me into their their tribe to work with people who really do love poetry and who love their authors and who love each other is is such a an exciting thing to be able to do and and also to again to feel like when I open a book of poems that's come from Boa to, to feel like I'm meeting a new member of, of my family I guess before I published the book because I never had experience of a more sort of business e exchange and it wasn't that it was I mean there was business and, and BOA takes care of business but they also take care of poets. What BOA has contributed do you want a list? I mean it's amazing. Lee Young Lee and Dorian Lux and and you all took first books. You had the courage to take Dorian's first books, Kim Adonito first books, Lee Young Lee first book, my first book do you, I mean, do you realize what courage and what editorial stamina and faith in first books it needed 
you know, to have you do that. It's amazing what Boa contributed. <laughs>